Okay, so today we're going to be doing uh, exponents and law of exponents. Okay, so exponents. You've seen this before, you've experienced a lot of it. I just like to go over things to make sure that if someone forgot something, um, I refresh their memory. So it says, what is 3 to the 5th and, and what is its value? So over here, going over a little vocabulary, our big number here, our base, this is the 3, it's the visually larger printed number. And then we have its exponent. Sometimes it's called a power, sometimes it's called an index. Uh, I usually refer to it as exponent or power. So what does 3 to the 5th really mean? So logically it means 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So old school math, and then you just times all those numbers together to get its value, which would end up being 243. Now, if you're using a calculator, which I would recommend you do, you would type it into the calculator as 3 caret 5, and it would give you your 243. Okay, so some different things happen when we have negative bases to exponents. Now, if you're using a calculator, which I always recommend you use calculators when it comes to dealing with big exponents and things like that, is you need to make sure you put your base in parentheses, especially if that number is negative. If you don't, your calculator will give you the wrong answer because it's think you're doing something different than what you uh, believe you're typing in. So initially we have negative two to the first power. That means there's just a single negative two. And so therefore that's our answer. But negative 2 to the second power means negative 2 times negative 2. And negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Then we have negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 for our next one. And we know that negative 2 times negative 2, well, that's positive 4 times negative 2. And 4 times negative 2, well, that's negative 8. So if we do the same thing for negative 2 to the fourth, we have negative 2 times negative 2, times negative 2, times negative 2. And so negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, and negative 2 times negative 2 is also 4, and that gets us 4 times 4, which is 16. So you might start looking at this and say, hey, well, when I have a odd exponent, my answers are negative. And when I have an even exponent, my answers are positive. And that's what this little slide is pointing out to you. If you have a negative base raised to an odd exponent, it's negative. And if you have a negative base raised to an even exponent, the answer is going to be positive. Make sure you get that down. It's something you may already know. Once again, please be careful with the calculators and negative bases. You need parentheses around those values. All right, so now we're going to start um, just kind of look at some of the nuances you have to be careful of when um, if you're trying to do things in your head and stuff like that. So if we have negative 1 to the third power, once again, that is negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. And that's really just going to give us uh, 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. But since the exponent is odd, we know the answer will be a negative value. Now the second one is the one I really want to point out. We have a negative, and then we have negative two to the sixth power. You do not, you do not do this. You do not go plus plus. No, do not do that. That cannot be done in this scenario because you have an exponent here. We follow order of operations, pin dash. You need to do exponents first. So we have negative 2 to the 6th power. I'm going to just type that into a calculator. So parentheses negative 2 to the 6th power is going to give us 64. There's still the negative sign that's in front. So now negative times 64 is negative 64 as an answer. Please be careful if you're trying to do that in your head versus utilizing a calculator. All right, so now we're going to jump in to the laws of exponents. This is a review from back in the day in Algebra 1. You may have forgotten some of them. You may just need a refresher. So I'm going to go through all of them, um, hopefully quickly. 
And we're going to go through some ones that people tend to forget about. All right, so over here we have x to the fourth times x to the third. If the bases are the same, if they're both x's or both threes, or they have to be the same value for the base, and you're multiplying, we add exponents. So this is really x to the four plus three, which is really x to the seventh for our answer. Same thing's happening over here. The bases must be the same. So what I really have here is three to the two plus five. Two plus five is gonna give us seven. And I could leave my answer like that, or I could evaluate it and get 2187. So our property here, our law of exponent is a base to some exponent times the same base to a different exponent gets added together. That's one of our laws of exponents. Okay, another law of exponent, which relates very closely to the last one, is if we have, once again, the same base, the same base. So here we have x and x as bases. But this time we have a fraction bar, which really means division. So if we are dividing, what we're really doing will be subtracting those exponents. Numerator goes first, subtract the denominator's exponent. So we really have x to the seventh for our answer. Same thing's happening here. Once again, these bases must be the same to utilize this property. So we really have two to the fifth minus two which is really two to the third, which is technically eight. So this law of exponents, this property, is any number, any base to some exponent divided by the same base with a different exponent, could even be the same number technically, you subtract them. So it's a, m, minus n. And that's the other property of exponents. Another one dealing with what we call the uh, power to a power property when it comes to the law of exponents. If you have an exponent being raised to another exponent, you multiply them together. So technically I have x two times four, so that's really x to the eighth. Now, if you have multiple values inside the parentheses with an exponent, it will go to each one. So I technically have two to the fifth times x three times five. So two to the fifth is 32, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so 32. And then we have our x, and then three times five is 15. And now we simplify it. This also works inside um, when we have fractions, you'll notice this time that the bases are different. That's okay. That just saves us some work. But the property of an exponent to an exponent still applies. So technically, this is x to the third times five, y to the fourth times five. So that's really going to give us the answer of x to the 15 over y to the 20. And since the bases are different, there's nothing we can do here. We can't use that previous property of subtraction. So we just have to leave it the way it is. So here, our property is really just a to the m being raised to a new exponent means a to the m times n. All right, so dealing with negative exponents. So one thing I always like to point out with this is that we have the ability to manipulate our expression so that we have positive exponents instead of negative exponents. So I'd like to point out that if you use your calculator and do 2 to the negative 1, you're going to get the answer 0 0.5. If you type into your calculator, 1 divided by 2 to the first, which is just 1 half, you get 0 0.5, which means that these two expressions are equivalent. They are the same thing, which means technically this right here is really 1 over 2 to the first, or we just call 1 half. 
So if I look over here, I have x to the negative 2. If I want to make that exponent a positive, I'd have 1 over x to the positive 2. Since I know that over here these expressions are the same, if I have 2 to the negative 1, or if I make it a fraction with 1 over 2 to the positive 1, they're the same thing, this property applies. It's our negative exponent property. This can be done. I can shift the position of the term from numerator to denominator to make the exponent positive. I can also move a, a term from the denominator to the numerator and its exponent will turn positive. The movement from the position from numerator to denominator is what switches the sign of the exponent. So as another example, I have 1 over x to the negative 3. Well, if I want this exponent to be a positive, I just move it to the numerator. So I really have 1x to the positive 3. And now there's no more fraction because there's nothing left on the denominator. I move that x to the negative 3 to the top, which makes it positive. So the same thing happens over here in this last question, where I have uh, x to the negative 5 uh, and then over uh, y to the negative 3. So if I want to make this top uh, exponent positive, I would move it to the bottom. If I want to move this y to the negative 3 and make that one positive, I want to move it to the top. So I really would have y to the positive 3 over x to the positive 5. So moving the position of a value switches its exponent from positive to negative and vice versa. So the mathematical way of writing it out is a to the negative n equals 1 over a to the n. And you can see it as 1 over a to the negative n would equal a to the negative n. Okay, so the last uh, real property here is when you have 0 as an exponent. Now, if you go ahead to your calculator and you type in, say, 2 to the exponent of 0, it's going to give you the number 1, which seems weird. I can even do that with here, negative 4 to the 0. When I type in negative 4, once again, use parentheses, to the 0, it's going to give me 1. So the question really becomes, why in the world does this even happen? How can this number turn into a 1? Well, it has to do with a pattern that is occurring with values. And let me show you why it happens. So let's say I have 2 to the negative 2. Let me use a different color. So let's say I'm doing uh, 2, oops, 2 to the negative 2. 2 to the negative 1, 2 to the 0, 2 to the first, 2 to the second. So let's let's do the easy ones that I know. Okay, I know that 2 to the second is 4. I know 2 to the first is 2. Let's pretend I didn't use a calculator, so I don't know what 2 to the 0 is. Well, I learned earlier that 2 to the negative 1 is really 0 0.5, or just 1 half. So here, if this is going to be 2 to the negative 2, once again, I can rewrite this as 1 over 2 squared, which is really just 1 over 4. So I'm kind of looking at a pattern here. I'm looking at this pattern. I know, because I've been doing math for a long time, is that 1 half times 2, oh, sorry, 1 fourth times 2 is 1 half. So the question is, over here, I know that 2 times 2 is 4. So there must be a pattern here that's happening. 1 half times 2 must get me a number. Well, that number would be 1. 1 half times 2 is 1. And if I continue that pattern, 1 times 2 would get me 2. And that's where the 1's coming from. But it works for all the numbers. So if I had, say, 3 to the negative 2, 3 to the negative 1, 3 to the 0, oops, uh, 3 to the first, 3 to the second, I would have 9, 3, 1 third, 1 ninth. And I can see that 
if I just multiply in this case by three, I get one third and one third times three is one and one times three is three and three times three is nine. I keep getting this one and it happens for every number except, except there is an exception, zero. You cannot do zero to the zero power. Sadly, doesn't work for you. It's just the one number that doesn't work, but it works for all the others but zero. So we can say, you can say over here that our property is a to the zero. So any number to the zero power is one, but a is not allowed to be zero. So that's the only number that doesn't work. But that's the why that number always ends up being one. All right, so let's look at some other types of problems utilizing the laws of exponents and our general number sense that you'll come across in your assignment today. So we have we have problem one that says write uh, as a write as a power of two. So they, I have some different numbers here that we can write as a power of two. So when it's saying write as a power of two, it's referring to its base. It wants the base to be a two with some exponent. So we just have to figure out two to what exponent gives us uh, 16. I know that two to the fourth would be 16. Therefore, we have an answer of two to the fourth power, which would be fulfilling the directions. We have one over 16. Well, that's fine. We know that we have one over two to the fourth, because we know earlier from so that 16 is really two to the fourth, but now it's just one over two to the fourth. But it is currently not as a power of two because it's in the denominator. So I want to move it to the numerator. So I'm going to take this two to the uh, fourth. I'm going to move it to the top. Remember, when I shift the position, I'm using that negative exponent property, which would turn that into a negative four as an exponent. So if we look at a one, like how in the world do we write that? with a power of two that has a base of two. Well, we all know that any number to the zero exponent would equal one, except for zero. Therefore, we could say two to the zero would equal one. So therefore, we know we've now written it as a power of two. And then our last one here, we have four times two to the n. We can rewrite four as two squared, then we can use our laws of exponents to say since the bases are the same, the two exponents would be added when we have a multiplication going on. So now we've written it as the power of two. Okay, moving on to another one. So this one says express an exponent in the form of a prime number base. So remember a prime number is a number that's only divisible by one and itself. So currently I have nine to the fourth. So a prime number that I could rewrite nine as would be three. I know three squared is really nine. So three squared is just another way to write the number nine. And to kind of simplify the problem up a little bit, we know that an exponent to an exponent is multiplication. So it will be timesing. And so we will have three to the eighth power. And we've got our answer. So if we look at another one, we have three to the x. Three is a prime number. Only three and one divides to make three. So I have three to the x on top. But as we saw earlier in our last example, that the nine can be rewritten as a three. So we can say three uh, squared times y. And so we know that that's really two y in the numerator. But we're gonna try to write this as a uh, as a single base. Right now we have two separate bases going on. We have a numerator and a denominator. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move that denominator to the top. And remember, when I do that, the exponent sign changes. So now I'm gonna have three to the x times three the negative 2x. Now remember, if we have times, we're technically doing an addition. So we have 
3x plus negative 2y, but that looks really messy. We're going to clean it up. We know that a, a positive and a negative would make a negative, so we're going to write it simply as 3x minus 2y would be the cleanest way to write that expression. All right, and then our um, problem over here, 25 to the x, uh, a, number, a way we can rewrite 25 would be 5 squared. 5 is a prime number, and 5 squared is 25. And once again, an exponent to an exponent is multiplication. So what we end up having here is 5 to the 2x. Last one. So this is the last one we're going to do. And it's just asking us to simplify. Some of this is just a little quick review. There's some that have a little nuance that I'd like to talk about, just in case you come across it in your assignment. We have 7 to the 0 power. We know that any number to the 0 power is 1, except for 0. We have 3 to the negative 2. We can move that negative exponent uh, into a positive by shifting it to the denominator. So we technically have three, 1 over 3 squared, which is really just 1 ninth. Okay. And then we have 3 to the 0 minus 3 to the negative 1. So one thing that we know is that 3 to the 0 power is the number 1. We want to make this negative exponent into a positive, so technically this is 1 minus 1 third, and then 1 minus 1 third is 2 thirds. You can use a calculator or use your mental math skills. So the last one that I want to talk about here uh, can be approached in two different ways. Uh, one way is to use our exponent, our power to the power property for our laws of exponents. Keep in mind that every number has an exponent. If you don't see the exponent, it is the number one. So technically what I have here is five to the one times negative two over three to the first times negative two, which gets us five to the negative two over three to the negative two. But we want to have positive exponents here. So we would shift the positions of our terms. So we would end up with uh, we would end up with 3 squared on top and 5 squared on the bottom, which would give us an answer of 9 over 25. To me, that's a bit of a long way of doing it, but there's also another approach we could do by using our property of logs, oh, sorry, properties of exponents. That's a little bit faster in my opinion. So you could also go with if you want to make this exponent here into a positive, what we can do is flip the position of our base here. So if we flip it to 5 over 3, now that exponent is positive. So now we can, once again, think of it like this, but we're going to do it in less steps. 2 to the first, uh, two to the first power is just 2, so we really have 3 squared. Five, uh, 1 times 2 is 2, so we really have 5 squared, which is 9 over 25. And you can also do that mentally in your head. I don't need to see work for something like that. All right, um, you will find your assignment in eCampus.